really is great to see you sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> and also, a uh, word of welcome to all of those who may be joining us online. Um, feel free to chat it up as you can on that place and introduce uh, yourselves to each other. And we will now continue our worship with the opening hymn number 137. As you're able, please stand with me. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on the holy mount revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. In today's reading, Moses brings God's law to the people. From his time in God's presence, Moses' face shines, frightening the Israelites. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tables of covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites that he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses and the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the psalm this morning, responding by half verse. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of the cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon this holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered into the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my Son, my Chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate a moment in the life of Jesus and a few of his closest friends. It occurs just before his departure, as the gospel calls it, even in the Greek better translated, exodus. His exodus journey from life to crucifixion to death, to resurrection. We heard that on the mountain, Jesus was illumined in splendored majesty before those three witnessing disciples who surely were struck by the wondrous moment unfolding before them, terrified, the gospel says, in the sense of awe struck. Back in the fifth century, Leo the Great said this of the transfiguration event. Jesus was providing a firm foundation for the hope of the Holy Church. The whole body of Christ was to understand the kind of transformation that it would receive as his gift. The members of that body were to look forward to a share in that glory which first blazed out in Christ their head. Close quote. For us now in the 21st century, we need this summertime reminder of God's glory, God's beauty, an advance installment, if you will, on the hope of all creation. In other words, we need the gift of wonder to remind us that we, you and I, as minute participants in the whole of the universe, are created in God's image to reflect in our very life the wonder 
of God. Albert Einstein said this, there are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. The difference between those two approaches is how we choose to see, how we decide to engage the world and everything in it, including one another. One of my favorite memories is of my son Peter when he was about two or three years old. We were on the front lawn of my parents' house. As he toddled along, you know, in that funny little child gait, he came upon a bright apricot-colored leaf, stooped over to pick it up, then held it up to the sunlight where the leaf and he were illuminated. The look on his face was that of pure wonder, even joy. And I was drawn into it with him to see life as a miracle, to see him, the leaf, and my part in it as his dad, as a miracle if only for a moment. You and I, like the disciples on that holy mountain 2,000 years ago, need moments of wonder. Note that the event of Jesus' transfiguration as described in Luke's gospel begins with him in prayer. And in this whole section, Jesus is looking to align himself with God's desire for his life. He enters into that prayer, offering himself to a centered conversation with God, whereby he might gain a measure of clarity about his mission on earth. And then what began in prayer grew into an intense mystical experience. As recounted, we are given a window, a window through which we are able to catch a glimpse of Jesus' identity, revealing to us Jesus' unique role in salvation history, standing next to Moses and Elijah as symbols of all the law and all the prophets. There are in my experience, gifted moments in life when we are able to see most clearly unitive experiences, if you will, when we know to the very depths of our being why we are here, for what we were created, and that in our human experience, we know ourselves held by a love that knows no bounds. Unlike last Sunday, when I choose not to give in to a fishing image provided in the gospel, this week I'm going to succumb to a fishing image in order to provide a picture of wonder. When standing in a stream waving a fly rod, I tend to see differently, more intently whether it be the otters playing, the wood ducks cavorting, or even a tiny caddisfly riding a current seam. I can look at a slick of water coming out of a riffle and see it as, a, as perfect a thing as I will ever know. David James Duncan, one of my favorite authors, says that every Refractive slide is a glimpse of eternity. I'll go even further. If I happen to entice a trout with one of my feather furry creations suspended in the water's meniscus, 
I bring that trout to hand and hold it glistening, reflecting in that rainbow trout, a creature that has existed unchanged in the gene pool for more than two million years. These are moments when I am overcome, full of wonder, even awe, full of thanksgiving to God in my part in God's creation. Moments like this are when I, by grace, am able to live as though everything is a miracle. The prayer we uttered in the opening collect for the transfiguration asked of God that we might be delivered from the disquietude of this world. If disquietude is a feeling of anxiety that makes us tense and irritable, its antidote might be, also in the collect, by faith holding the king in his beauty, that is, his wonder, and seeing the world around us in a similar way. I'll go to David James Duncan one more time when he says that, Wonder is like grace, in that it's not a condition we grasp, it grasps us. This is something of the quality of the awareness that Jesus knew on the Holy Mount. He was in that moment so completely drawn by grace into the fullness of his humanity that his divinity could not help but shine forth. That is why in Christian understanding, there is really only one sacrament who is Jesus the Christ. He is the outward and visible sign of who God is. Any other sacramental expression is only so to the degree that it manifests Christ himself and draws us to that place where we know our own Christ-likeness and that of others. Do we choose to see the world through the eyes of wonder? Or do we choose to do so through some other lens? How we see can be our gift to the world. I invite you now, as you're able to stand with me, as we proclaim the faith of the church in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers, both clergy and laity. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Dan. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. And again, because we can't do it too many times, welcome, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and my prayer is, among other things, that as your ministry feeds us, that our ministry with you feeds you with the wonder of God. There is a gathering Sunday a week uh, after this service, uh, a, a gathering to welcome Justin with a reception and encourage you to uh, join us at that time and continue to ask you to hold him in your prayer. 
Also want to call your attention, if you haven't seen it yet, to Father Joe's letter, Father Joe being our soon-to-be interim rector beginning in September. And um, his letter is, uh, is online on the website, and also it was in the printed... Oh, you have some copies. Yes? Yeah, great, if you haven't seen it yet. Thank you for that. Um, I don't have other announcements. Um, are there any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? Yes. Birthdays? Ah, great. Happy birthday. You can tell us later how many. Okay. Anyone else? Pray with me the blessing prayer as found in your leaflet. May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May the Spirit of God bless you in the coming year. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body and blood of Christ.
For Abel, please stand with me for the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.